Hello, everyone. I'm Chauncey Lennon from the Lumina Foundation. I'm excited to be here with you to talk about this project. Uh, let me introduce Tamar Jacoby, uh, who is our partner in this work. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to her to start us off with some questions. Chauncey, it's great to be here with you. I'm going to take us to a slide deck. And then we'll walk through it together. Um, so let me, you're my funder. Uh, I'm president of Opportunity America. Um, you, why are you funding this work? Uh, this, is a, this is a national survey of community college workforce education. Why is that of interest to Lumina? Well, I think for this audience, some of that answer should be pretty clear. Uh, we all know that the labor market is changing. Uh, uh, for anyone to succeed, they really need some kind of education or training post high school. Uh, the, the, the chart up on the screen uh, shows you how it's changed over the last uh, 40 odd years. Uh, and you know, sometimes people tend to think about this largely in terms of bachelor's degrees, like you really need to go to college to succeed. But what this, this, this chart is showing us is that uh, it's equally, if not more true in terms of people getting associate degrees, uh, some kind of college at all, and uh, very importantly, short-term credentials, certificates and certifications. Uh, and so uh, we know uh, that people need more education training. The challenge is we don't know a lot about where uh, certainly the short-term credential part of that training is happening and how it's happening. Well, uh, well now, that's my next question for you really is where is this training taking place? Um, you know, we know where people get four-year bachelor's degrees. Where do people get job training? So something that in some ways should be self-evident is often something that we, we have a hard time remembering, which is that uh, in the U.S., we have a very substantial platform that does training for occupational two-year degrees, uh, certificates and certifications. Uh, that's known as a community college. And as this table shows us, uh, we've got close to 12 million people in community colleges every year. Uh, that really, um, you know, when we compare that to some of the other kinds of short-term training we see at boot camps, we owe a funded adult training, apprenticeships, you realize just how large the community college system is. Now, just because it's large doesn't mean it doesn't, it's not segmented, it's not fractured, it doesn't have challenges, uh, but it is, uh, it is training uh, lots of people in the kinds of skills that are in demand that are, that are short of a BA. Um, it probably needs to train more people, uh, but again, it, it's large. So, okay, I understand why you're interested in, in, in what, we, what some people call middle skill. I understand why you're interested in community college, but why this strange beast called non-credit community college? Well, so, you know, part of, uh, you know, if people have a hard time remembering uh, that our community college system is where the action is when it comes to um, uh, short-term uh, credentials, uh, they, even have a, they even have a harder time really understanding what's happening in what we call the non-credit side of community colleges, right? People, I think, uh, get that community colleges uh, do a lot of work providing people with AA degrees. Some of that is about transferring on to a four-year institution. Some of that is just about getting an occupational degree that leads to a job. Uh, but but a, a sizable portion of community colleges, the training they're doing is on the non-credit side. So these are courses uh, that are going to lead to some kind of, of employment, uh, but they're not organized within the credit structure. Um, they're often leading to different kinds of degrees, so different kinds of credentials, so certi certificates and certifications, uh, but we just don't know as much about them. Part of why we don't know as much about them is that um, uh, because they're not part of a degree pathway, we're not collecting data in the same way we do for um, uh, two-year degrees and certificates. And so we're really kind of in the dark when it comes to what in some ways is one of the biggest uh, pathways uh, that uh, uh, American students are taking into the labor market. And, and part of one of the reasons it's in the dark is we don't fund it. So we don't, if we don't fund it, we don't keep track of it. And it's a kind of a chicken and egg. Yeah. Okay, so here's our survey. All right, so um, you know, this is a problem that we've been thinking about, we've been trying to figure out how to do more about. Uh, and so uh, you know, it, it, it came time to really you know, sort of stop wondering what we could learn and really figure out how do we learn more about this. So Tamar, tell us about how you went about uh, trying to answer some of these questions. Thank you, Chauncey. And thank you, obviously, for the support. We haven't had a chance to say that, but thank you for the support of this project. So we organized a national uh, survey of community college educators. We, the sample included all two-year public institutions that are eligible in any way, shape, or form for federal government aid, even if it wasn't all the programs, but some of them. It was a long questionnaire. We did not just ask 
how's your Instacart driver? What did you think of the service? There are 57 deep dive data-driven questions, some of them open-ended. We were in the field for what felt like forever, a little longer than we anticipated because of the COVID pandemic. And we were very proud to end up with a 38 percent response rate. That's a high number um, in, the, in the world of contemporary surveys, especially during a pandemic and for a, a world where they're kind of surveyed out, is the, is the, is the saying. Terrific. And, um, uh, you know, say just a little bit more about, you know, uh, how, how new was this? Had anyone done anything quite like this before? There have been some, there were some surveys of non-credit workforce education 10, 15 years ago, um, when it was a very different animal and the landscape was very different, um, but no one had looked in a while. And it, it, it was, you know, as the picture a moment ago showed, it was really a black box um, because only a few states keep data. Many colleges keep very little data. Many states keep almost no data. So there was very little known. There'd been, there hadn't been a survey in quite a long time. You know, the metaphor we kind of used as we embarked was that we were, you know, Columbus's voyage. We were the first explorers kind of trying to sail across the ocean. We had no idea if it was going to be a big ocean or a small ocean, really. Um, but we we set out and um, and 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 we, you know, we haven't mapped it all yet. It is still kind of a rudimentary map, but we've got a bit of a map now. Terrific. So tell us a little bit about what what we've learned from the sort of first um, uh, round of data. So this is preliminary data, it's important to say. The real results are coming uh, probably early in the fall. And so these don't, don't these are, they may even change by a few, you know, tenths of a percentage point. So don't take anything too much with, a, uh, take it all with a grain of salt. But this is the, and this is a national average. So as a national average, as you see, the gray is the credit side of the college. The blue, both solid and striped, is the non-credit side. Thus, the striped for both colors is the job focused education. And, you know, the big takeaway for me, so we're not quite talking quarters, 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 they're not quite even, but the big takeaway for me is that job focused education predominates on both sides of the house. Um, on the credit side, it's about 53% of enrollments. On the non-credit side, it's about 57% of enrollments. And overall, it's more than half. And I think that's going to surprise a lot of people. Um, there are a lot of people who think it's mostly over here, this transfer, this is the transfer quadrant. This is the people preparing for four-year college. Well, they're not even a third. Um, and a lot, and these are the people taking French cooking and walking tours of Charlotte and, and you know, photography for amateurs. But more, more, nearly 55% are people preparing for the workforce. So you said that this was an average. What, what do we know about the variation here? Is this, do, 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 do most colleges look like this or do we see a divergence from um, the average? No, there's huge variation from the average. Some schools, again, here you see about a third uh, of the whole thing is, is, is non-credit. Some schools non-credit is 20%. Some schools non-credit is 60%. You see a huge variation and you also see, we'll see that actually in, this, in a slide in a moment. You also see a huge variation in how much is workforce. Sometimes the whole non-credit side is French cooking and there's only a little bit of workforce. Sometimes the whole non-credit side is workforce and there's only a little bit of French cooking. It varies from state to state because states have a lot to do with this and it varies from college to college. So what does this tell us then about how well uh, our infrastructure is set up to actually help the, the millions of Americans uh, who are going to be looking for the kind of short-term training as a way to get back in the labor market and to upgrade their skills uh, in light of the kind of economic volatility? Yeah, volatility. that's a really Very good question. That may be getting ahead of my survey. Um, you know, we do need this quadrant too. I'm no one saying we should abolish this quadrant. These are the young people who come to community college as a stepping stone to a four year institution. And that's very important. You know, this is quite a robust number. It's uneven. And that's a lot of what the, that's, that's, let, let's continue. Maybe we should continue with our slides. That's, it's uneven in quality. They all, it's all uneven in quality. Let's say that. It's all uneven in quality. A lot of these people who want to get to four year schools never get there. A lot of the people who take workforce training, the workforce training isn't plugged into the labor market. Um, there's, there's, un, there's unevenness all around. Um, but 
you know, I'm encouraged that half of the system is focused on workforce. That's a step in the right direction. Terrific. Um, maybe we should go to the next slide. So uh, this is showing us how things vary by states. And, you know, it, it's, it's hard to, you know, uh, given the, the size of the table here, uh, see what's going on. But tell us what, 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 what are the takeaways from this big variation across states? Yes, well, first, let's just say again a minute, let's make sure everyone knows about, uh, and we, you know, perhaps my, my bad, I should have explained this a little earlier. You know, non-credit is often mid-career adults, right? Um, they come to college for a skill. They're not interested in degrees. And they go to an entirely separate division, the non-credit division, where they don't get college credit. And the other important thing there is that those, those, those um, programs are not accredited. The faculty committee has nothing to do with it. That can be both good and bad, but it does make it easier for employers to work with the non-credit side, right? Because if I'm Tamar's widget company and I show up at the community college and I say, I want training, the credit side is, we'll say, come back in two years when, uh, you know, we have, we, we, we can set up a program and the non-credit side will be, when do you want it? What do you want? Um, but here you see the national average is 35%. Um, the state variation, again, apologize for the small chart, but it ranges from about 15, we can leave out this one as an outlier, to more than 70. So it's, there's a broad range, you know, and it's some, again, have very little non-credit, some have very extensive non-credit. So does this tell us that some states are really uh, sort of leaning into or embracing uh, this role of non-credit as, 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 as kind of the pathway uh, for adults who are looking for uh, skills? Well, I'm going to go to the next slide because we don't, just because they have a lot of non-credit, again, what's in the black box of non-credit matters. Sometimes, and sometimes they're embracing it, sometimes they're just sort of there by default by accident, right? And sometimes, so here's how much of the non-credit is job focused. And we've seen this in a, another version in an earlier slide, but again, national average 57, it's a huge, and, and there's actually a little bit of this other falls in that bucket too. So it's about 60% is job focused. Um, but this is an, again, a national average. In some places you'll see a high percentage of the, col of the college, colleges writ large in the state are non-credit, but a lot of what they're teaching is, is you know, I should, I should stop beating up French cooking, but French cooking and photography. So it's hard to generalize. And again, the, you can, I can't say it enough in a presentation, the quality is uneven. Mm -hmm. So say a, a few words about, you know, some of the, the kind of descriptors here, job focus. How, how easy or how challenging was it when we went out, when you went out to survey colleges to, to get them to sort of use kind of consistent language about what's a workforce uh, program uh, versus what's a, a you know, a, a transfer or a, a liberal arts program or a gen yeah. general studies program. Yes, I mean, you've put your finger on a sore spot. Um, you know, we thought that these labels were kind of self-evident. Uh, we thought we had a glossary, we tested the terms, we thought, you know, how complicated can it be? Job focused, job focused. Well, when you look at this, at the other, the other had an open end, you could write in what you thought you meant by other. And it included things like emergency medical technician training and certified nursing assistant training, which is, you know, patently job focused. Why it landed in other, hard to know. But so, you know, A, they, the schools might not have good data. They often don't have good data, so the numbers might be off. But B, the definitional, it, there's no definitional clarity. And, um, you know, it's, it, this goes back to the, we're Columbus sailing out. You know, we're, sa we're not only are we new and new explorers, but the territory is not quite formed yet. It's still a sort of amorphous territory. Whoops, I took us backwards. Um, yeah, so we should we should probably keep going. We're our, um, sure. So time. so let's talk about then what what are the what are the kind of credential outcomes? What what do people get when they when they go they show up at community college? You know they're they're sort of stuck in their job. They've lost their job. They need to change occupations. They come to the community college. They go into some of these programs. What happens? Well, this is really the slide for you to talk about, right? Because this is Lumina's uh, big concern. But this is, the, this is just the wedge of the pie that's non-credit workforce focused, job focused. So, you know, obviously, on, and what people mostly get here, mostly they're still getting, 56% of them are getting a non-credit certificate. A non-credit certificate is not worth much in the world. Um, a non-credit certificate, you can't trade it in for college credit usually you know, who's going to recognize it. But increasingly, what's good news for me here is that the third party certifications are gaining 
on the certificates. If you add up the industry certifications and the government certification and licensure, which you know in the, some circumstances can count, you know we're we're getting up there. We're getting toward you know forty over forty percent. So maybe you should now. I'm going to turn the tables on you. Um, Lumina has recently. Um, decided to include some certifications in its count of credentials of value. Um, how do you think about certifications? What is a what is a certification of value? Sure. So you know, I think the I want to go back to your, your point about you know just what kind of uncharted territory this is, right? You you, you could imagine that in a kind of a sophisticated uh, modern economy, these would be all sorts of things that we would have more of a line of sight on. Right? Uh, certifications, you know, in some sense are the clearest kind of credential we have. It's a measure of skill. Uh, it, 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 uh, mastery is a, assessed through an exam or a test. Um, you know, employers uh, know what they're getting. Uh, and so, um, you know, I, we see um, uh, the, the kind of power of certifications in many occupations, and especially for uh, adults who don't have uh, A's or BA's, uh, you know, uh, the, the right certification uh, is a way to get into a job that pays good wages and, and has a stability uh, in the long run and upper mobility. Well, and let's uh, emphasize the word right, right? I mean, because what Lumina did is create some definitional boundaries, you know, exactly what's sort of missing in the field saying, these are the ones that we're going to think of as having value. And these are the ones, you know, I could start the Tamar Jacoby nail polishing certification right. and it wouldn't mean much. Right. Well, um, um, just to be a little bit controversial, you know, we, we hear a lot about certifications these days. We're hearing about them often in terms of a Google certification or a Amazon Web Services certification. Those are all good, but those are not industry certified. Those are certifications issued by a particular corporation. Um, you know, uh, one hopes that they will have uh, the same kind of um, uh, labor market payoff that we know of a certain, a certain set of industry certifications. But I feel like the, the data is not yet in if that's the case, right? We're gonna have to pay close attention to that. Uh, but again, they offer the things that adults are looking for there. They're short term, they're low cost, and they seem to be very directly connected to a job. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think, again, we are, we are really excited about the opportunity here uh, to better understand the important role uh, that, again, the, the non-credit side of community colleges are playing in putting people on the pathway to these certifications. And again, as you said, the, the, the upside here is that because they come from industry, you know, they have a kind of tighter connection uh, to uh, uh, employer and employer demand. Uh, but the flip side of that is that because those certifications uh, exams are not from within the house, so to speak, of a community college, we have, we have relatively weak data on, on what's happening. So just alone seeing what slice of the pie uh, sort of certifications are uh, at, on the non-credit side has been a, a real step forward. Well, that's great. And when we get to our full results, we'll have a little more. So I think we're coming to the end. Um, I don't know who, who's asking. So, who so tell us, so, you know, of course, uh, I'm sure everyone's wondering, well, how, who, who pays for what? Tell us what we learned so far. Well, um, this is, you know, the sad story in a way, right? Because um, non-credit programs, you cannot use your Pell Grant. So I can use my Pell Grant to get a psychology associate degree, which, you know, in the labor market is really worth virtually nothing, but I cannot use my Pell Grant to get a, 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 a non-credit certification in, in welding that could get me quite a good job or in, or in, a, as in a medical health, allied health field. Um, so what this shows is who's paying. Um, some states are stepping up, that's what this quadrant is, let me make sure, to cover a, 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 some chunk of it. And that's, this is a pretty, this is a, you know, decent chunk. And it's, this is more than I maybe would have expected. But most the lion's share here is self-pay and employer paid. And that means that the people who need the training the most, um, and often these mid-career adults who just lost their job somewhere else are having to reach into their pocket and pay for the program. I think this, this limits uh, the number of people that could be getting this kind of education. Um, it's, I don't think it's particularly equitable. Uh, you know, I think if you're gonna start to talk about free community college, this is the first place I would look. Uh, can we figure out some way maybe not free, but can we figure out some way to get these kinds of labor market focused programs paid for? And, you know, I, I would just echo that, you know, uh, you know, these are often folks who come at the greatest disadvantage. Uh, you know, they have uh, the, sort of the least amount of resources to, uh, uh, you know, put into paying. The current system isn't really covering them. Uh, 
Right. Uh, and so it's a really important question of what is going to be the most effective way to do that. Now, I think we, as you said previously, there are huge quality issues here, right? We actually don't want to spend a lot of anyone's money, uh, government money, individual money, on uh, credentials that that have no value. Uh, so we've got to really, uh, you know, think carefully about what kind of system is both going to expand people's access to these kinds of uh, programs on the non-credit side of community colleges, uh, but at the same time ensure. Um, uh, kind of consumer protection and equality and quality concerns. Yes, no, no, obviously, and and we probably don't have time really to get too far into it. But you know, do they do they partner with employers? Do they lead to jobs? Do they have? Do they culminate in industry certifications? You know, we can. Do they do they lead to the transfer side of the college if that's what you want to do? It's you know, I mean, there's legislation pending, and there a lot of people have given this thought. Um, but. Um, Okay, we're almost, we're, we're, I think we're, we're almost out of time. So um, th this is really well, our on, last on that, on that last point, tell us, so you, know, you just raised an intriguing set of, of a sort of next round of questions. Tell us more about what we're gonna learn when we see the full, uh, the full data set uh, when it's ready in the fall. Well, these are some of the other issues that we asked about. Now asked about doesn't necessarily mean answered, right? Because for example, we asked about non-credit student demographics. Most colleges, many colleges do not keep things as, as, and that complicated data, demographic data on non-credit students. I literally had one uh, non-credit, one, one college say to me, we know whether they paid with in credit card or not. That's all we know by credit card. But anyway, these are some of our other questions. Demographics, fields of study, how those certifications are embedded. Does the college teach to the course, require it, who pays for the test? Another really important question, crossover from non-credit to credit. Some people want to just get their non-credit uh, certification or whatever and go straight to work, their skill. Others eventually want to come back to the college. We don't want to make them relearn skills and spend time there again. So how does the crossover work? Tools to ensure quality of programs, what, we did, what the question you just asked, how do we make sure that programs are aligned and we're not wasting the taxpayer or anybody's money? Employers, we haven't talked at all about employers. And this is where the data, the data is getting worse and worse as we go down this list. Um, there's very little data on employer partners, but we did ask about employer partners and work-based learning. And then we asked this important question at the end about what data do they keep? And that, you know, I think all this point, this, we have some answers on all of this, but all this also points forward into where further exploration needs to be done. Well, this is this is very exciting. It's 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 so terrific just to even have uh, this first step forward. I, I couldn't agree more. There's there's going to be so much more to do, but uh, just getting the sort of full picture uh, that came from this project uh, will will add so much to our understanding of this important issue.